All right then, gang. So Bulma comes with a few classes that we can use to control the spacing of elements. Now, first of all, we have the margin and the padding utility classes, and these are very simple classes that can apply different amounts of both margin and padding in each direction. So I've got three H1s right here, and we're just going to apply some of these different spacing classes to each of these. So say, for example, I want to apply some padding to this first one at the top in the Y direction, and the Y direction is up and down. Well, to do that, I'd say P for padding, Y for the Y direction, and then hyphen, a number from 1 to 6. Now, 6 is going to be the most padding, and 1 is going to be the least amount of padding. So if I say PY6, that should be a lot of padding in the Y direction. And if I inspect this and hover over it, we should see the green patches. Let me just zoom this down. If I hover over this one, the green patches there, that is the padding. If I change this to PY1, then there's not going to be as much padding as we can see right there. OK, so let's change this back to PY6. And if I want to apply margin in the Y direction, this time I just say MY, then a number again from 1 to 6. So I could say 2 and save that. And now if I hover over this, the green is the padding and the orange is the margin, right? So if I change this to 6, then we should get a much bigger margin like so. All right then. So we can also do this in the X direction. So if I come down here, I'm going to say PX for padding in the X direction, hyphen four. And I'm also going to do margin in the X direction. So MX, and that's going to be hyphen six. So if I save this, the second one is going to have padding and margin in the X direction, not in the Y direction. So if I hover over that, we can see the green and the orange squares. All right. Now, if I want to apply padding or margin in the Y direction as well as the X, I can do that. We can just mix them up. I could come over here and say PY4, and I could do MY as well if I wanted to. Save that, and if we hover over, now we can see we've got padding in the Y direction as well as the X direction. Okay, so very simple classes to apply padding margin in the X direction and the Y direction as well. So what if we want to apply margin or padding in just one of the directions? So for example, the top, not the bottom as well. So Y wouldn't work because Y is to the top and the bottom. So to do that, we can use M, T for margin top and then hyphen a number again, one to six. So that's going to be four. I could also say something like MR for margin right, hyphen four. Then I could say maybe PB hyphen six for padding bottom and then PL or ML for the left side, and that's going to be a strength three. So we can use T for top, R for right, B for bottom, and L for left as well, and they can be used with padding and margin. If we save this and then hover over this, we can see the margin is the top and the right, and the padding is left and bottom, all right? So there's also a couple of other ways to apply spacing to elements. The first way is to use a section class to denote a new section of content. So I could, for example, create a section tag and give this a class of section as well. And by the way, this is Emmet in action. If you use a VS Code, Emmet comes baked into it. And if you want to quickly create some kind of element with a class, you can type out the element name, then a dot, then the class name, then press tab, and it's going to create that tag for you with that class. So we're going to use this section class right here. And what that does is automatically apply some margin and padding to this particular section. So if I do a paragraph tag inside here and say lorem, and then I'm going to say 30 and then tab to get me a load of lorem ipsum. If I do that and then save it and come back over here, we can see down here, this is the section. And if I inspect this, then you can see this section right here. It doesn't get any margin, I'm sorry. It just gets padding all the way around it just to give it some breathing room. So each section on your web page, if you embed it inside a section class, would have this padding just to space it out a little bit, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be a section tag that we use. To me, that makes sense. But if you want to use a different tag, you can do. So for example, a div, give that a class of section. And if I do a P tag inside here and a load of lorem as well, so lorem 30, then press tab, creates 30 words for us. Save that and come down here. We can see this gets exactly the same styling. It's not a section element. It just uses the section class and that's what gets styled, all right? 
Now, there's one other thing I want to show you as well, and that is a container. At the minute, if we make this full screen, we can see that the content goes all of the way across, okay? Now, a lot of the times, we have a central column of content. So it's kept within, say, 1,200 pixels or 960 pixels or something like that. Now, to do that in Bulma, we can just use the container class. So right down here on this second one, for example, I could do a div with a class of container, like so, and then take the ending tag and then place it below the P, right here and let me scoot these in okay so now this paragraph is placed inside this container and this container applies auto margin left and right and a max width as well to the content inside it so if i save it now it's going to centralize the contents in the middle of the screen you can see right here and if we inspect that we should see if we go over the container that we have a margin left and right of auto and if I make this a bit bigger over here, we should eventually see as well a max width right there, 960 pixels, okay? So that is how we use spacing, margin, and padding in Bulma.